Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in the A10C and we have the absolute pleasure of covering the air to ground gun. The gun is the Gal 8 30mm rotary cannon. I'm sure you all know about it with its distinctive burt sound. So we're going to have a look at the different options and ammos and uh, employment uses. So let's have a quick look in the armament panel. We have our gun ammo type here. We can have High explosive incendiary, so this is going to be for infantry or very light armor. Combat mix, which just seems to be the most useful general purpose. It is a mix of armor piercing and high explosive incendiary. Therefore, it can be used against just about everything, including heavy armor and, of course, you've got practice. So we're going to go for combat mix today. Whichever we choose, we'll have 1150 rounds. Request rearming. While we load that up, we're going to have a quick look at the controls we're going to be using today. So, to actually fire the gun, we're going to be using gun trigger. But we'll also want to use the PAC system. This is a system that corrects for the recoil of the gun. And we're going to use this command here, gun trigger first stage. We're going to hold that down whilst pulling the trigger here to engage the pack compensation system. I don't have a second stage trigger as such on my flight stick. So instead, I'm binding this first stage here to a different button on my left HOTAS. We'll want the master mode select here to change to gun master mode and we'll want DMS data management system left and right to be able to change gun reticles. Next we're going to arm the gun up so to our AHCP panel here we're going to go master arm to arm and the gun the pack recoil system to arm. We can see here on our DSMS if we select it we've got our 1150 rounds there combat mix. We've got our weapons currently ground safety so we can't fire them until we're airborne. Okay, let's take off and look for some bad guys. Okay, we're airborne now, so we're going to use our master mode select to turn us into gun mode. So we're going to press it, and you can see it's gone to gun mode. Just out of interest, we can also have CCIP, CCRP, or nav mode. So we're going to turn it to guns, and that is our guns essentially selected and ready for use. Now, the first thing we're going to see, if I just point myself down, is our CCIP pipper. This is our default aiming mode. There are four different aiming modes that we're going to go through, but this will be our default, and in 99% of the cases, this will be the one we're going to use. Now, the CCIP reticle here, CCIP is continuously calculated impact point, really good piece of equipment. It's not showing where we're aiming the aircraft, it's predicting where if we fired the, bullet, the gun now, and the gun actually, I believe, is that cross there, that's where the bullets are going to come out and towards. But it's going to predict that if we fire the gun now, that pipper there, or that dot there, is where the actual bullets are going to fall. Now there are some parameters that the aircraft needs to be able to work this reticle here. And so for instance, if we aimed above the horizon where the CCIP reticle here would not be able to calculate, you see that we're getting an invalid message. So we're up above the horizon now. And it can no longer calculate where those bullets are going to drop. So we've got a cross and or we've got a um, CCIP invalid note here. And if we put it back down to a place where it can calculate the bullet drop then we get the proper reticle as long as it doesn't have the cross through the middle then it's good to fire so i'm just going to get a little closer to the ground now and then we'll go through the different reticles okay that's pretty good there so regards to the hard things to note we have combat mix loaded and we've got 1150 of them our weapon master arm is on so we can fire as we spoke about before this is our ccip reticle this is the default reticle that we got and get unless we tell it otherwise we have a ranging clock which is this inner marker here so you can see it unwinds at the gun's maximum range it starts at the top it unwinds all the way down until the gun's minimum range out of interest if we do get within the minimum range and that minimum range can actually be set we're not going to show it today, but um, we'll get a little triangle up here if we're too close. We've also got a slant range here. So this is a slant range, and this here is also a slant range showing 1.3 nautical miles. We've got the actual impact point of the bullets or the rounds here. Now note that there's two of them, and that's because we've got combat mix. We've got armor piercing rounds and high explosive incendiary, and those two rounds have a slightly different flight path because of well different weight i suppose so for instance if we were in high explosive only then you would only have a single pipper and the upper one is the armor piercing one that one flies a little bit further for whatever reason and the lower one here is the uh, high explosive incendiary so if we were going to attack a tank then we'd want to be using this pipper here we also have some moving target compensation as well in this line and this line here so assuming that a target was moving either left to right or right to left then we can use the appropriate marker here or here to adjust lead and that is calibrated for 20 knots of movement either left or right or right to left so you can gauge your left to right lead with those markers there 
Regards actual range of firing, further away from the impact point that we are, the slower the bullets will be travelling and the more spread out in and inaccurate they are. Roughly speaking, against infantry and extremely light armour, we can fire all the way up to two miles away and be effective. If it's tanks, very heavy armour, then don't even try beyond 0.5 miles, otherwise you'll have no effect. So that's the CCIP reticle, let's just unpause now. And we're going to change to the next reticle using DMS, Data Management System, left. Now before we do that we have to make sure our HUD is soy, sensor of interest, the selected sensor. And you know it is because it's got that star there. But if for some reason it wasn't sensor of interest then you need to make it and I've got to show you that. You'll be using that coolie switch up with a short press. So we're going to use our DMS left now. And this is just a, well, it's actually called in the manual a wind corrected boresight cross. So it doesn't have computer calculation of where the bullets are going to drop. It's just a wind directed cross, and there's not really much uh, to say about that. Then the next one, we've got this. Again, it's bore sighted, so it doesn't have any kind of lead computation, and it's 4812 sight. So, what we're interested in here is that that is the pipa to use if we are 4,000 feet slant range from the target. Remember, there's 6,000 feet in a nautical mile. This is our 8,000 feet if we're 8,000 feet from a target, and this is if we're 12,000 feet from a target. So, that's the best we can use in that case. And next, on um, pause, is this guy here. This is our CCIP cross, so it's continuously counted impact, just like the uh, CCIP reticle, except that just the display format is simplified into a cross, and we've got our slant range there in miles. In 99% of situations, you're going to want the CCIP reticle here. The only reason you wouldn't use that is if there wasn't the necessary information for this to work, like you were attacking a target that's above you, or for some reason, if you didn't have the target elevation known, the target elevation would almost always be known. Now, if, as attacking the target we're gonna find the target either visually with our eyes or we can use our targeting pod we can essentially lock a target up if you like with a targeting pod or a, or a mark point we don't have to it just can aid targeting a bit if you do that and as well as BDA in this case we're just gonna find the target with our eyes and shoot at them without any target selection that's perfectly fine to do that. Regards to the run-in method, I always suggest a good solid run-in, plenty of altitude, plenty of distance so you've got lots of time to aim your target and you don't put yourself in a perilous position so I like to go a good four or five miles away from the target. I like to climb up to 4,000 feet AGL minimum, come down in a dive of 10 to 20 degrees and then I'm going to start my firing within two miles if it's light uh, armour or infantry like we said or within half a mile if it's tanks using the correct reticle dot. Regards speed, it's such a slow bird I would just say maximum speed all the time for the dive, you, you, you're never going to go too fast. You would also do flares or countermeasures as you ingress and egress from the target. I haven't set them up for this run, so I'm not going to do... Ah, there they are. There's my bad guys. So countermeasures should be employed. Right, I'm going to head away for four miles and turn around. Okay, of our target spotted, we're going to head out now for the necessary four or five miles and get to altitude. Sort my trim out at the same time because we're going to be going quite fast in the dive. Okay, I think that'll do us at altitude in that range. Let's turn in. Rolling in now, about four and a half miles away. The targets are what I'd describe as light to medium armour, I think. So I'm going to fire at them at the full range and I should still be effective. Because I'm going to be strafing, I'm going to be using the high incendiary marker here, knowing that the AP will still hit because it's above. I'm not going to hold the first, uh, the pack system detent until we are within firing range of two miles. Okay, gonna hold the pack now and start firing. Bullet time is massive because we're two miles away, obviously. You can see the uh, two papers are gonna up, about to merge up. now. Altitude, altitude. Oh, we got some hits. I don't think we killed anything, but right, we'll go around now and go in for a more aggressive run. Okay, at altitude and range. Let's turn in. Regards when you should pull off target, well to be honest I think it just depends on the defences that the hostile have, in this case they don't have any de real defences so I can go in as close as I want, but just bear that in mind when you're dealing with uh, AAA, ZU-23s or Vulcans or something, you're going to want to stay over a mile from the target. Right, let's go in again, let's get on our angle and wait, they're kind of hard to hit because they're on a corner. Wait for two miles, going to use the HE Pipper. Hold the pack and off we go. 
walk the pipper up the target as best we can. <laughs> Not very well. Pull up, pull up. That was jolly good fun. Oh, that was all that ammo gone. Altitude, altitude. Look, we got some of the blighters. Great gun. Great gun. Right, I think that's all I want to say about the gun. It's awesome and just makes this plane worthwhile. Although the A10A does have the same gun, just not quite the same functionality. I hope that helps and see you later.